Today, guys, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a database catalog inside Microsoft Excel. It's quite a straightforward process uh, once you kind of get into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the Excel side of things. Then, so smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and let's talk about how to create a you know catalog database inside Microsoft Excel. And we're actually going to use this data that I've got right here. This is what I use for basically tracking all of the video ideas and the kind of titles, the video links, kind of what I'm planning for for what days, right? Kind of catalog of YouTube, of YouTube videos, right? And so this is just a kind of raw data dump and this is fine, this is okay, but it doesn't let you very easily and streamlined kind of way of searching for different types of content like you would a database, right? Doing a query and trying to pull back maybe all the videos that were related to Excel, for example, or all the videos that I put out on a Wednesday or, you know, all the videos maybe for a specific month, right? And if you have a database, it allows you to search that database in a really structured way, right? So this data here is good, but it is just dumped down and I would basically have to apply filters and search for things manually, right? Rather than kind of using a query from inside Microsoft Excel to find it. So the easiest way to start this process is that make sure that your data is structured correctly to start with, right? A column for each type of data. So whether that is, you know, text fields, date fields, time fields, um, whatever it may be, number fields, you know, whether they're decimal numbers, whole numbers, all of that kind of stuff, whether they're currency fields, make sure that each column only has a, one specific type of data. So in this particular case, the majority of my data is text, right? With the exception of date, which you can see over here is already a date field. And this one over here is a custom because it's uh, basically time. If we come into custom, we go to more fun, uh, fun number formats here. You can see how I've customized it to being a hour and minute kind of time frame, right? So this is basically date time in terms of data, uh, database kind of sense, right? So you have lots of text and these. Now, if you were having currency, you'd make sure that your types were currency and you'd make sure if you had the decimal numbers, you would have decimal numbers and so forth, right? Um, so. Once you've got your data structured that way, the next thing to make sure is you haven't got any breaks in your data. Right, so coming down here, you can see that I've got a couple of rows of data that don't have ideas formulated yet, but I do have records coming all the way down to Friday the uh, 31st of uh, October 2025, right? So my database isn't actually broken because there's data in every single cell within my column B and C. However, if I were to, you know, remove data from here by, you know, basically not doing that, but basically highlighting this area and hitting delete key, well, now you can see that there's a break in this data, right? And so you don't want that. You need to make sure that your data goes from start to bottom, okay? And you don't have any missing breaks. Once you've done all of those things, it's actually quite straightforward from here. The easiest way to do this is on the home tab is go over to where it says format as a table. You can drop down menu from there and you have all of these different styles. Now this is actually more than just how, you know, Excel looks and feels. This actually shows you and kind of allows you to convert your data into a structured table whilst also simultaneously giving you a better look and feel. Now, for me, obviously I've got lots of different colors going on with in my structure, but I usually prefer black and white kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this one here. Now it automatically is going to try to create a table and it's going to be based on what it has already highlighted. Okay, so the important thing to do here is to make sure that you are inside your data somewhere. You don't have to highlight everything. You I mean you could if you wanted to, but you just have to be inside your data. And when you click on format as table, select it, uh, whatever format you want, it will automatically highlight everything that is connected together. That was why we don't have a break in our data and there's no blank rows anywhere because it will automatically select from the top all the way down to the bottom. It will automatically, Excel will automatically detect what you need, okay, or what you're trying to do. Now, alternatively, if you're not inside your data and you go ahead and try to do this, it's gonna come back and say, well, it's only this one cell. There's nothing connected to that cell and Excel doesn't know what to do. So by this point, with this highlighted, you can, of course, come across 
and select all of your data manually by just clicking and dragging across. And again, it will highlight everything. But like I said earlier, right, the easiest way and the most streamlined way, click into your data, click on format as table, click on the table that you want, the style that you want, and it will automatically detect that I have headers as well. If it doesn't, you can also manually tick this button or untick it. Okay, so we'll tick it. So A1 to H143 would basically be my table. And I can click OK, and it's going to convert all of that. It's going to keep my formatting of any manual formatting colors that I have. Everything else will go into banded colors here, and it'll be black and white. Okay. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to use this format as table button, well, you can, of course, navigate to, uh, I think it's the insert area here. And then from here, you can find table. Uh, so if we go over to here where it says table, again, inside our data, click on table, and it's going to do the, exactly the same process. But this time, there's no formatting changes, right? It's not going to automatically format anything. If I click OK, it's going to choose a default format, right? And so then you'd have to manually come in here and choose the one that you wanted, right? So again, like I say, it, I find it personally a little bit easier just to use, if I come out of here, just to use this home tab, go to format as table, click on the one you want, and then you've got that. Okay, so that's kind of like your first step, right? Kind of done. It's very straightforward. Once it's a table, your data is structured and Excel knows how to use it and how to, how to search your data for you. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. Now, this expands just beyond Excel because when your data is in a table, you can start using your Excel data for other applications, whether that's Power BI or Power Automate. Your tables can now be interconnected via you know, the web, and that's quite a powerful tool. So the first thing we're going to want to do once we have our data structured inside a table here is to actually give our database a name, right? So when we're in here, the first thing you'll notice is we'll have a contextual tab called table design pop up. This will always pop up when you are inside your data. So by clicking anywhere inside your table uh, in your data, you'll have this uh, table design contextual tab appear. And when you click out of it, it will disappear. Click in and it will appear, click out, it will disappear. Okay, so this is a great way to kind of make sure that you know where you are at any one point. If you're not seeing the contextual table design tab, then you're not actually in a structured table, which means there might be a break in your data set that actually then means you're missing information uh, in your table on your database. So with this selected and inside this data um, contextual tab or the table design contextual tab, the first thing we need to do is change the name of our database, right? So at the moment it says table five and we're going to call this video ideas. Now we can't use spaces or special characters. So we're going to use an underscore and I'm going to go ideas. Okay. And then I'm going to press enter. Now our table has a name. Our database has a name. It is called video ideas. Okay. So if you understand how databases works, you have a, data, a database uh, table and then um, inside the table, you're going to have records, right? And in there, you're going to have different, um, different kind of data points for each record. Okay. So inside here you have, uh, basically our video ideas is our table. And then we have, um, the type, the, the day, the, the date, the uh, time, the idea, the title that I've actually gone for in the end, and the link to the YouTube video and any tags, although they're kind of redundant on YouTube these days. Um, okay, so this is basically a database table. Now it's obviously structured in a way that allows me to do things with it. Now, by default, when you have a table, you'll have these filter options at the top here, you know, fully kind of emerged and ready to go. Okay, so this allows you now to just automatically filter your database table accordingly. Now, there are, of course, some really strong Excel functions that you can use once you have your table set up, right? So it's very important that uh, we reflect on, you know, how to use those. But in this particular video, we're not really going to focus on using those equations because this video is all about building the database itself or the database catalog itself, not necessarily about how you would query it. Okay. But if you want something around that, let me know in the comments down below, and I will create a video specifically focusing in on the 
formulas that you use to query a database table, but it is quite straightforward again. Um, but let me know if that is something that you guys are looking for. So here, obviously, with our database cor uh, cor uh, created, we now have all of our data structured and we can now filter it. So if I wanted to just look at all of my Excel based videos, again, I can just filter it to Excel very much like you would normally. And um, but obviously all of these filters are already there and already in place. So I can see all the videos I have created uh, for Excel and I can see the ones that I'm working on, including this one right here, uh, which is how to build a catalog database in Excel. This being my catalog of videos. OK, and then, of course, the next one I'm going to be looking to do in September, uh, in actually July here is 10 you know, Excel skills to help you land your next job. So you can let me know if you're interested in that a little bit earlier. I can always bump it up the list. Right. So that's kind of the first thing we can see clear that out. Uh, in here and of course all of these types of data are then very important because it's how you would use them later on so yeah that's going to really wrap up this how to build a catalog database do let me know if you're looking to um, to actually have something like uh, the formulas and a video around how to use the uh, D functions the database functions within Excel specifically you can let me know in the comments down below but if you found this useful informative smash the like button subscribe for more and I'll catch you in the next one